I don't know, I didn't see. Okay. All right, all right, we're back on. All right, so how old were you when you first started playing the drums? Probably 14 years old. Okay then, that was easy. <laughs> um, let's see, why did I... How, how did you first join the band? I answered an ad in a newspaper and uh, uh, a, a band looking for a drummer. And uh, so I answered the ad and I went down and auditioned. And what year was that? Uh, you know, uh, probably the later 1971 or maybe very early uh, 72. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. What was the band called when you joined? They were Pendragon. They were fully with Pen Pendragon. Pendragon, yeah. yeah. And when you were playing with Pendragon, when did it first begin to really start to feel like a rock band rather than just a garage band? When did it feel like a rock band? Yeah. Right away. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was rock and roll music, yeah, of course. <laughs> and what were the first songs that you learned to play with them? Were they original songs or were they cover tunes? Yeah, they were original songs. Uh, um, Rock and Roll Star, uh, and there was uh, You're a Human Now, Devil's Do, uh, you know, uh, Realm of Seven Planes. I, I heard these songs, they were all great songs, I thought, you know. But you know how you hear a song, you gotta play it, uh, mm -hmm. and hear it a couple times. So they kind of grew on me. You know? But I knew they were commercial hits in my mind. I said, so this is a band that could go somewhere. And now you have the record to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, when you learned these songs, did you have recordings to listen to of the previous drummer? Or did you make up your own part when you came well, in? Well, just the pretty standard rock and roll songs. So. Yeah. Uh, they caught on pretty pretty quick. Except yeah. for the, the changes, you gotta learn the changes, you know. Mm -hmm. um, backing up to another question, you didn't ask me what the first instrument I played was. What was the first instrument that well, you played? Well, I, I played the drum. I mean, the trump. <laughs> <laughs> I played the trumpet from the time I was eight years old in school. You know, fourth mm -hmm. grade they offer you an instrument to play. So I played the trumpet all through uh, two, three years in the high school, and. Uh, so, I could read music as a drummer, oh. you know, so it helped So because I could actually write songs of my own on the clef, you know, on the... Yeah. You know. So, why did you switch to drums from trumpet? Why did I go to trumpet? Yeah. Uh, well, the trumpet, you know, there's uh, not so many bands that have horns, you know, uh, as a, in the rock and roll business. And you wanted to be uh, in a band? I wanted to be you know, the drummer came easy. Yeah. Uh, the the trumpet, you know, your your lip, you know, after a while. Uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and your neck. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's see. You already answered that. Nope. But I played uh, alongside another trumpet player in uh, junior school, uh, junior high school, and he went on to play with uh, Boss Skaggs, and on the first album, uh, Loan Me a Dime. And he was very uh, well accomplished. He kept playing the trumpet and mm. kept playing and honed his talent. So, not why I played the drums. I always liked the drums better. Uh. Um, as a drummer, who are your five favorite bands or musical influences? Or drummers or bands? Both. Both, okay. But as a drummer. Yeah, I would say Keith Moon of The, the Who. Was one of my favorite drummers. Uh, there was a drummer, and I'm shaking on his shady on his name. He was the drummer of a band called Deep Purple. And um, who else? There was. Uh, I always liked uh, uh, Don Henley because he was a drummer singer, and he wrote some of his own songs. Not to mention Hotel California. And, uh, Just a little tune. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows but that there one. But there were so many bands. <laughs> The Bay Area, I loved uh, the Jefferson Airplane. Uh, I wasn't a big Grateful Dead fan, but um, 
uh, I liked, uh, <laughs> uh, but they were a great band, and uh, uh, you know, Moby Grape, and uh, you know, see who else, um, too many to even uh, uh, mention, uh, um, Creedence Clearwater Revival, and um, Bay Area, uh, there was uh, Huey Lewis in the News, he came later, uh, on and on, you know. So just a lot of that sound. I played, time, played uh, jammed one time with a, a young uh, guitar player who was uh, uh, in Santana at the age of 15, huh? oh, and uh, he went on to start Journey with okay. another local out of uh, San Carlos. Uh, uh, his name was Greg Raleigh, so, and he played in uh, Journey, wrote some songs. So. And. What do you think about the San Francisco earthquake getting a second printing? So this, your album came out once and now they're going to have to do a second printing because yeah. people want to buy more. Oh, right, How do right, you right, feel right. about that? that? That's great, you know, because uh, 500, you know, it's a collector's item. You know, it's a box set and not everybody has record players, but we hear that they're coming back. They are. Uh, Ooh, and so yeah. that's, that's great because I still have a, a record collection of about 600 albums from the 60s and the 70s and mostly in the maybe some 80s. Well, now you uh, have uh, 603 albums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, now we've got a three disc uh, album, which is great, you know. And, and so, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I've told people, uh, uh, hey, I've got a box set and double CDs of our band. But, you know, the, not all of them, uh, the baby boomers, our, our age group, uh, play records. But uh, we'll see. Next few years, huh? Would you like to gig again? Would you like to play around as Uther Pendragon now? Yeah, that, w that would be great, but uh, it, it would have to be a con convenient situation where, uh, you know, we all get together somewhere and rehearse a little before uh, uh, a gig, you know. A friend of mine listened to a, a double CD I gave him uh, uh, where I'm living, and he uh, said, God, you guys could play at the Great American Music Hall in San Francisco, which was a very popular place back in the, uh, the 60s for bands to play. Mm -hmm. uh, you know? He said, you guys would fit right in you know, with a lot of the, uh, even the nowadays bands. You know? Oh, yeah. Because we were all 20, in our 20s when uh, we uh, wrote and played all these songs. You know? Well, Martin said that all of the greats from the 70s are now your age, so there's no problem with having guys your age on yeah, stage yeah. and rocking. <laughs> I was a baby in Pendragon, you know. Oh, you were? <laughs> yeah, I was the youngest, you know. <laughs> and then Mark was a year ahead of me, and then uh, Martin was uh, two years ahead of me. And then Bruce being the eldest, uh, you know, he's going to be uh, 70. But look at the stones, huh? Exactly. Still on stage. <laughs> up there in age. <laughs> um, let's see. What did you feel when you first heard that Gerson Records contacted you about making an album out of your recordings? My first feelings? Yes. Uh, kind of uh, unbelievable, you know. It was like, uh, geez, uh, what, what the power of the internet, you know. When uh, Craig... Uh, Put, put on uh, videos and he got artwork and put the videos together with the music from the tape tape sets uh, uh, Bruce and uh, uh, Craig uh, uh, put together uh, you know out of a box of old tapes that we uh, poor man's copyright we sent them back to us you know so proof of the copyrights so it makes a difference you know and uh, uh, so that was uh, amazing that uh, here we are, we're getting all this recognition 45 years later, you know, for music we played back in the, in the 70s. It, it was all boiled down to, uh, we ran into some roadblocks with the uh, money and, and uh, the timing and, and, and of course Martin getting sick mm -hmm. and ending up in the hospital and because uh, um, two or the three of us worked for Martin and so the money wasn't coming in, you know for a period of time. And so we lost the lease on our studio, mm -hmm. which we built inside a, a warehouse in Palo Alto. And uh, you couldn't take the lease agreement, you can't take anything you build or attach to the building. 
So that meant you can't take the sound oh. control room or the sheetrock and the space in between and the plywood and all the things that went into making and the materials that we spent to build a recording studio. So some of the songs we, we recorded in there. Yeah. Um, you already answered that, you already did that. What was your favorite pen dragon gig? Favorite pen dragon gig? gig? I would have to say we warmed up a band called The Tubes in Santa Cruz Mountains uh, at a place called the Town and Country Lodge one night. And uh, uh, I can remember a couple coming out of the, uh, the club and said, God, oh, you guys are great. You know? They said, well, thank you. you know? Or you could have people come up to you on stage, like The Shelter in San Jose, and say, oh, who does that song? Uh, came up to me and said, we do. <laughs> I think it was Troubles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's my favorite song, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Let's see. The great thing about Pendergon, we included everybody in the band as the songwriters when I drive. So, even yeah. though we know whose idea it was, and, you know, with particular songs. But, but when we disbanded, uh, I had a number of songs on the shelf, just like everybody else, Bruce and, uh, and, and Mark, uh, especially. Uh, Martin being the great play, a bass player, and uh, uh, he was most theatrical in our band, always had been, you know? Yep. <laughs> Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Um, did you play Keystone Berkeley? We did, but I'll tell you, it was on a Monday night. And it was kind of their, uh, uh, um, you know, this audition type night on a Monday night. But there was a guy in the audience and, and he asked Bruce uh, if he could come up and play the, the guitar, you know, for uh, the gig. And Bruce kind of declined. And that person just happened to be Elvin Bishop, uh, who was a notable in the Bay Area. Uh, he wrote Put On Your Traveling Shoes. He wrote a song for Mickey Thomas of the Jefferson Starship called uh, um, Step Right Up, She's a Beauty, something like that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that was a fun gig, but I'll tell you the truth, somebody stole my hi-hat before oh. we could load it up to my drum set. It was missing, and I'll never forget it. <laughs> oh. oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, but it was a very notable place for the weekends for bands to play. And uh, I don't remember why we didn't go back there and play, but we played at the Keystone in Palo Alto, which was another one. And a lot of big bands played there. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Are you guys planning on coming out with a new album with any more songs or perhaps redoing any of your older songs? That's yet to be seen, you know, <laughs> because... Uh, uh, the party was a stepping stone, you know, the record release and having this get together and people know know about us, at least up here, and whoever buys the albums and uh, the box set and the double CDs. There may be somebody out there besides Gerson Records that says, uh, we'd like you guys to play it mm -hmm. again. So I was kind of in the back of my mind was counting on maybe something like that might happen, you know. And then if we're all up for it, and healthy enough and uh, to go out and play again, it'd be a lot of fun, you know? It'd be great, you know? Well, thank you very much to Mike Beers, drummer of Uther Pendragon. Thank you. That was it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was short and sweet. Martin was in here for two hours. Yeah, Martin we couldn't get the camera thing. We had to do I'm several things over. That's, that's it was really enough. funny. Oh, wait a minute. I